This week's podcast features a number of interviews we conducted in Romania during the X-Day conference hosted by Multiverse X. In this podcast, we will hear from Benjamin Minku, the founder of Multiverse X, Bogdan Ivan, the Romanian Minister of Digitalization, Shiraz Ahmed, Managing Partner at Storm Partners, Sunny Agarwal, Co-Founder of Osmosis, Sergio Biris, Head of Product at Multiverse X, Grigori Rosu, Founder of Runtime Verification, and Danilo Carlucci, Founder and CEO of Morningstar Ventures. In this episode, we will discuss the current state of Multiverse X, the transition from Elrond, crypto adoption in Romania, universal ZK rollups and its benefits, upcoming trends and narratives, challenges laying ahead for Multiverse X, and much more. But first, Benjamin will introduce us to X-Day. X-Day is probably one of the largest Web3 conference in Europe, probably one of the largest conferences done at the intersection of Web3 or blockchain AI and the metaverse. Um, it's definitely one of the most interesting where super high quality um, people. It's not only focused on multiverse X, there is a broad focus on the most ambitious builders that are building on our technology, but there are also some very, very important conversations that are meant to build bridges with some of the most important regulators, um, some of the most important and largest companies, tech companies in the world, and partners for many, many ecosystems. So we want XDA to be probably one of the most interesting and ambitious platforms in Europe to explore um, ideas and um, startups um, at this frontier. If we look at everything we've achieved, it is through technology that we've achieved it. Technology has enabled us to differentiate ourselves from um, other species on this planet. Um, And we are at the point where we've achieved a lot of milestones, but there's a tremendous opportunity to improve a lot more. And especially if we look at blockchain, um, artificial intelligence and spatial computing as technologies, um, these are technologies that are right now at the, almost a tipping point. You can see them taking roots, but the most important part becomes building these bridges, the bridges that take the technologies and put them in the hands of the users, the bridges that are essentially applications that we can use in our day-to-day lives. And so this has been the focus of the conversation uh, where everything that we're doing during these three days is just different bridges, whether it's applications, whether it's startups, whether it's um, conversations with three ministers of countries, whether it's um, conversations with Google, Amazon, Tencent, and and, um, Telecom, and Axelar, or whether it's conversations with um, Alex Tabarrok, which is a famous economist from the US, um, or um, other builders that will be showcasing everything they've been building in the hackathon um, they participate at. So this is just a very, very exciting concentration of energy that is meant to accelerate whatever we're doing um, that that uh, will, I think, Im- have a very significant impact on, on the world in a positive sense. Roughly a year ago, Elrond rebranded to Multiverse X. Can you tell us about this transition and how the past year has been since the rebrand? So it was not a, a rebrand. It, it was much more a repositioning or, or a kind of refounding moment where we looked at what might some of the fundamental technologies be that will be extremely important um, during the next tw- 10, 20, 30 years. Looking through that lens, we of course looked at um, blockchain, we looked at AI and spatial computing. And repositioned everything to, to the point where we said it's not um, the metaverse, it's the multiverse. So it's this idea of having several worlds and then being at the intersection of worlds where we will explore many ideas, but just one at a time in a way that brings um, the most value to the people around us. 
So, my name is Danilo and I'm the founder and CEO of Monista Ventures, a fund based out of Dubai. If I think about, you know, the number of investments we've made over the last three or four years or so, um, I can see and can say that the teams are one of the most important uh, data points to actually look at in terms of like um, the quality of the team, the background of the team, the hunger of the team uh, was something that I've been fascinated by since the very beginning that I met Benjamin, the, the CEO of Multiverse X. So to this day, we can see the drive and the resilience that the team has in really building out that ecosystem. And also, it's definitely, from an investment point of view, more attractive to build on an underdog uh, than someone who's already successful. So we do think there's a lot of opportunity for Multiverse X to grow. I also think it's one of the most successful European projects ever. Of course, we've had Ethereum, which you can you know, consider as you know, European or at least somewhat the early days were heavily tied to Switzerland. Um, and Multiverse X is one of the other layer ones that has made it uh, to, to have some adoption in Europe. So that's something we like to support. What is so important to me is why some of these projects have decided to work on the protocol that Multiverse X have created when there are others like Ethereum, Tezos, Cardano and the likes. Uh, understanding and seeing that culture here is quite interesting. The integrity of the team itself not even necessarily of the chain, but that the fact that the team is kind of, let's say, to a certain extent, family run, that they have core values that are kind of close to uh, longevity and really bringing things together. They're not just kind of like more that American mentality that you have kind of like uh, higher, slow, fire fast and kind of move. You see that there's a lot of the people that have been here have been here for so long. If you look at some of the crypto projects today, some of the co-founders, like they make their millions and then they leave and go to the Bahamas or wherever, or even rug pull the project to the worst. Here you can see some of the co-founders and even the major C-level that have been here have been here for the past uh, three, four, five years and haven't left because that vision that they're trying to create is still some, some way to go. And to be able to do that, it is five, 10, 20 years down the line. So I think that's really cool to have that basis of stability and to see those projects be able to see that for the core values and of course the tech that follows that. I believe Romania is in a unique and exceptional position in Europe, both because it's very competitive at this point from a fiscal and, and tax standpoint. So this makes it very interesting compared to some of the other countries. Um, second, it is in the EU. In the EU, there is some clear regulation uh, with respect to crypto, blockchain and all of that. And so um, this just gives you a premise for some conversations. We've worked for five years now to actually have these conversations with the ministers and, and so forth. While they're open, they also want to see progress, substance and all of that. And I believe that the magic with these conversations is always to make sure that the other part is understanding what's at stake. What would be the benefits that the country can get if they leverage this technology, if they attract more builders, if they attract more startups. So at this point, um, Romania is very well positioned, but it's also, this is also a call to action to continue on this path and um, make, make really significant progress because all the builders, especially in the US and some other countries, are looking for better alternatives than what's currently happening there. Having been around to kind of see Elrond or Multiverse X today, to see what it's become and see uh, all of the innovation that they're looking to kind of lead and have uh, is mesmerizing to a certain perspective to kind of see that, um, especially their links with the traditional industry. I mean, some of the partnerships that are going to be announced uh, today and tomorrow and some of the things that we've seen over the past couple of years is quite impressive. I mean, just a testament to that is being here in this governmental building of parliament, you know, if you compare that to uh, the White House in the US, I don't think they would accommodate for a two, 3,000 person Web3 crypto blockchain conference in where they make the laws and legislation. But here today, it is really in this Bucharest Palace uh, or Parliament where they all discuss all these different things. So it shows that they've been able to have an impact on uh, the governmental authorities, on the public authorities of Romania to really kind of, yeah, move things forward. And I think that's a great part about what Montevideo Sex is great at doing, is creating those partnerships for the future and seeing that long-term vision. A lot of big focus on more like institutional 
like players. Like, you know, I, when I walked in, there was a talk from like Google Cloud and then Deutsche Com, Telecom, and then, you know, uh, just a circle. I was on a panel just now. So I think Multiverse X is doing a lot of work on like outreaching to, you know, more regulated, more government style entities and getting like larger companies involved with blockchain. This is really cool, the same. Definitely, the world, the, the world is changing and that digital transition is one way road. That, that is clear. And now it's, it's not a fact about uh, if, but it's a fact about when. And I'd like to, to, to be sure that Romania is on top of that new technology and innovation. And that's why I'm working on new, uh, or shaping the new legal framework. And in that moment, you have in debate, in national large debate, the Romanian AI strategy, uh, and will adopt until the end of that year. We have in the same time uh, and will bring into the government the blockchain uh, framework. And the third one will bring in the public debate in November the Romanian strategy for quantum. We have a golden mine with the beautiful mind of Romanians and Romanians uh, well, IT sec ITNC sector specialists. And with them, definitely could be part of and the hub of um, innovation, a, a hub of cybersecurity, a hub of emergency technologies, not only for Romania, but for entire area. With, for entire area, European Eastern and Ukraine and other countries. And with that, definitely we could be the main provider of software for um, quantum computing technology. In my opinion, is the part that, that is a part of the future. And together with the Minister of the Finance, together with the industry, we try to figure out how we could make that fiscal shape shapes and in one specific mode that to have trust and to build trust between state and the government and the people because you have in, in that moment three stake, main stakeholders you have the the state that could be a trust provider you have an industry that that they must be a trust provider too and you have the entire population the society so if you are you are dealing with their money definitely you want to to be sure and to bring warranties as a government to be sure that their money are in um, safety on entire uh, blockchain uh, and uh, cryptocurrencies providers and uh, the entire ecosystem of that, uh, of that new technology. What steps is Romania taking in attra attracting new crypto startups and projects and uh, what regulatory safeguards are being put in place? First of, first of one, we have that, we're working on that legal framework, a friendly legal fra uh, framework to make Romania one of the greatest country and the most attractive country for digital nomads and for companies, bring it outside the country, to bring here, bring here, and to make entire community together with our Romanian very good specialist. The second one, we are working on that specific framework about the, what we could bring on the market and Romania that moment have more than 6 billion euro for entire transition of the government to digital age. So about all the public services we'd like to bring in that new technology. So we have money for that. And definitely most of that money will be shared with the industry and uh, we need to really put it on the table. And that is the second large amount. And third one, definitely the human resource, which is great and could make a vibe and a great ecosystem for anyone to can bring the first step here in Romania, in Bucharest, in Cluj, in any community of us, of our country, and they see that they are feeling like home in a new, uh, friendly digital country. My vision is clear. I'd like to see what the main players worldwide make it in the last 10 years, to take the most beautiful and the most good examples of good practices and to put it here to grow to the next level. So that, in, in that way, definitely we are open and we are already uh, working with the most uh, developed countries in that way. So here's something new. Bumper your assets to defend them from price drops without losing upside exposure. You set a price floor and term length, then lock your tokens into the protocol. When your term ends, if the price has fallen under your floor, you leave with stablecoins at the floor value. Otherwise, you just take your original asset back. Benefit from 30% cheaper premiums than options or earn 3 to 18% real yield as a liquidity provider. 
Bumper just launched and is offering a share in $250,000 of Bump tokens to early users. What do you think will be the catalyst for the next bull market? The catalyst will be adoption. Um, I think what we have um, and are presenting with XA is a series of ecosystem upgrades that have to do with the network, like this literally becoming the most advanced network in the world. It, it already is, it's live, it's decentralized, but then we're improving it even further. Um, that's one thing, then the ecosystem, um, there's a lot of projects that are building and now showcasing what they've built. Then some products um, like the Exportal app, like the Xfabric app, so forth, that will be presented today and uh, will add a lot more usage and excitement for some of the users and ecosystem at the same time. Um, but then also the idea of having these bridges built with the largest tech companies in the world. Um, we've worked actually for years to come to a point where the minister of countries come and are part of the conversation. That type of di dialogue is not something small or something that can be taken for granted. It's actually um, a very significant milestone that just signals the type of conversations that we're having. Now, interestingly enough, tomorrow we'll also have some conversations on regulation, the regulatory landscape. And um, part of that conversation will be Deloitte. Um, again, very important partner that we're building with and, and um, so forth. And lastly, I, I would um, just mention that Many of the pieces are coming together in the multiverse X ecosystem, such that when you look at a kind of vertically integrated solution that has the performance of the protocol, um, has a UX application that is unparalleled in the entire space, um, but then also has a community and ecosystem that's vibrant, that just pushes the boundaries on, on building um, really exciting applications. Um, I think we're, we're very close to um, an exciting milestone that once X day passes will just become very obvious. When does the bear market end? Um, that's, um, that's up for the market to decide, but what we can do is considerably accelerate that point by bringing adoption. As soon as we have the next clear wave of adoption, the market will uh, probably shift very significantly. I think from a macroeconomic standpoint, we do need to see some things change there. If you look at some of the DeFi protocols today and uh, some of the ways in which kind of some of the lending is done and the likes, you're receiving interest rates that are below what you would receive maybe at your bank or in money market funds and the likes. So what is the point on having the delta of the risk of using a DeFi protocol at the moment when you could just do that maybe with a bank or with an insured product, uh, et cetera? So I think there needs to be innovation that happens there to make it incentivized to be able to do that. Um, and then, I mean, when is it going to come? I think a lot of people are expecting with the ETF to be announced uh, early next year and then with the halving to come, that is going to create a catalyst. I want to kind of be a skeptic to self-fulfilling prophecies and say, well, just because everybody's saying that it's going to happen, maybe it's not going to happen. I think it will happen naturally, the overall economic uh, macro aspects. But in terms of, uh, you know, additional exponential push for the crypto, I think the mass adoption and also the, the integration of uh, blockchain and AI ML that will push crypto to the next level. Because we can think of AI ML as searching for solutions to problems that we propose humans. We can propose these problems as claims on the blockchain and AI can search for the solution and present it and the blockchain verifies it. So we don't trust the AI, we verify it. Actually, I don't see any other way to regulate the AI ML except through the blockchain. The regulators, the human regulators, are not even able to regulate the blockchain. They have zero chance to regulate the AI. Absolutely zero chance. The only way, in my view, to regulate the AI will be through blockchain by enforcing AI to give you solutions that are verifiable on the blockchain, completely automatically.
crypto is all about narratives and some things come and some things go and some things stay. So uh, we're pretty open in general. We don't like to set ourselves too many boundaries. So we do actually look at everything, uh, especially when, when deal flow comes from, from warm introductions. Uh, however, um, you know, AI is definitely something that we are excited about, more from an education and learning perspective. We feel like there's so much to learn about the AI industry that that makes us excited, especially because we believe that AI and blockchain eventually are going to be um, you know, interacting. And in fact, that's actually an example, um, thinking of a future where AIs will interact with each other and will have to pay themselves uh, automatically in some kind of fashion. And I think crypto will be the answer. So we do believe this trend is coming, but it will take a few years down the line. For now, we're just focused on, on, on kind of educating ourselves about the field and about the synergy between blockchain and AI. And actually, that reminds me to another investment we've done called Humans. It's actually also a Romanian project uh, that is also aiming to be a layer one blockchain for uh, startups uh, right. that are focused on AI narratives. So uh, that's another investment we've, we've followed on this year. A few, a few really important points will probably continue to matter even more. One, interoperability. And um, for Multiverse X, we're going to announce something really exciting and fundamental with one of the biggest players in interoperability. Um, second, zero knowledge proofs and zero knowledge rollups will become the, um, let's say, gold standards in terms of um, further scaling, whatever scaling solutions exist, and um, privacy. They already are the standard. It's just about making sure that they're um, fast enough and inexpensive enough to be used at scale. Um, and then probably one of the most important threads that we'll focus on is this idea of user experience. It seems that people uh, love, uh, love the um, uh, technical memes and narratives a lot but they've not discovered that one of the most underscored and highest opportunity that is limiting the number of users that are coming in the space, interacting with the technologies, with the applications and so forth, is in fact user experience. So having an Apple-like user experience creates an edge unlike any other. And um, uh, I think later today you'll see what I mean um, if you watch the Xportal presentation. So in the, well, you know, the one panel I did so far, a lot of the focus was on like, what is gonna be, like, what's gonna bring TradFi people to crypto and DeFi? And I think for me, I'll, I think the big, two big topics we talked about, or a couple of big topics, we were talking about open APIs, like ease of composability by default. And Web2, all the APIs are closed by default, but in crypto, anything I can build on top build permissionlessly on top of anything. So that's very powerful. I think the speed of settlement uh, is, is a big deal. So, you know, I was on the panel with Sonia from uh, Circle and she was talking about how like, you know, the ability to settle USDC in seconds rather than days is a big driver. And then uh, the last one I talked about thought was privacy. I think, you know, I actually think that is gonna be the biggest selling feature of, you know, Trad DeFi and TradFi, we can get better with cryptography, we can get better privacy than people can get today. I think just, we're gonna see a resurgence of Bitcoin. Like I think ever since ordinals came out, like there's been a cultural shift in Bitcoin. And I think there's excitement to do more with Bitcoin today. And I, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, with our work in Cosmos, I want Bitcoin to be like the money of all of crypto, right? And Bitcoin, the asset is gonna flow off the Bitcoin blockchain and be like used as collateral and money and throughout the entire like DeFi ecosystem. I think for, for, for a macro trust, you know, I think trust is a really important one. Uh, blockchain technologies were created to be able to create trust in the digital economy through centralization, transparency, mutability. I think there's a core problem within, within the blockchain space, within the Web3 community where we don't trust each other. Now we go to these conferences, we hear someone talking about some shady stuff and we're just like, okay, that was a bit weird. We giggle in the background and then we don't really uh, do anything about it. We just kick the trash can to later. And I think if we have more accountability, 
and we really look into kind of self-responsibilization in a way. I don't think FTX would have happened. I don't think the Terra Luna crisis crash would have happened. I don't think we would have seen as many scams as we uh, have seen and we do still see today. So I believe that if we can bring back trust amongst ourselves and start developing and creating great things that are going to help this Web3 space to develop, then we're going to create trust from the outside world because we will create a little bit of a magnet. You know, when you're doing cool stuff, people are like, wow, there's so much good energy, etc." I don't see, to be honest with you, you know, in full transparency, so much of that good energy. You see people are struggling at the moment because they're lacking funding, etc. If we can bring that good energy back, good energy attracts good energy. So that's really a trend that I'm focusing on today is how can we bring back trust? How can we bring back some of that energy and the likes? And so that's a really important one for me. The kind of dual-edged sword has always been tokenization for me. Real world assets, all these things. You know, RWA, it's been rebranded now, et cetera. It was the first use case seven years ago that got me involved in the space. So I was like, wow, if we can create uh, democratized investment solutions, kind of like an Amazon, whereby you can pick and mix your different investment products and with 10 euros buy uh, a 0.001% of a gold a gold mining farm and solar panels and like all these different things, startups. With your $100, you created a, a, a diversified portfolio. That could be fantastic. And I think that's one where even over the past seven years, there's a lot of great projects that have come out to try to do this. None of them have really succeeded. Some of them have tried. Some of them are doing things now in real estate and a few other things. But I feel like if we can crack that code with the help of the regulators and the likes and to make uh, digital securities a thing, I think that is one where it's going to change uh, change the world. I mean, today, the cryptocurrency markets are around, what, like 20 uh, are valued at kind of like 20 trillion or something like this. Um, they, uh, they foresee uh, in the next uh, seven years, I think it was a McKinsey report, that that is going to be at around 420 uh, trillion, right? So uh, we're, we're going to see like a huge jump from what it could be today based on these tokenization of assets and securities. And I really hope and believe uh, that through continuously just iterating and working on it, those small steps can make for a really big leap. Yes, so we want to do a universal ZK rollup on multiverse X. What is that? It's a layer two, like a blockchain on top of another blockchain. And it's universal because it works with all programming languages and all virtual machines. Meaning that you can write smart contracts in any programming language and execute them on the rollup. And this is important without a need for a compiler or an interpreter as we know them. You can also compile to a virtual machine VM language if you want to and then execute through the VM language, but for our universal ZK rollup, there is no difference technically between a programming language or a VM. And if you want to use compilers, it's your business outside, but you are not required to translate to one specific language. Why? Because this rollup will be the first rollup which has no hardwired or predetermined programming language or virtual machine. There are cases also on Multiverse X when, when the network was congested, especially close to launches, and uh, as we see an increasing adoption of blockchain. There will be more and more transactions on, on Elrond, and um, it is always good to have high throughput uh, and low latency, of course. But I think the unique aspect of the universal ZK rollup that we propose will be truly its universality, because it will bring all programmers to the blockchain. Currently, there is a non-trivial onboarding period for even good programmers to become blockchain programmers. Usually because they have to learn a new language or a new library for the language and a new way of writing programs. But with the universal ZK rollup that we propose, which implements our pi-squared algorithm protocol, proof of proof, you will be able to take even existing programs in existing programming languages and run them, execute them as, as smart contracts on the blockchain. We believe that the future of blockchain should be universal. We should write programming languages in any, we should write programs in any programming languages. We should not be constrained by one particular programming language uh, 
for a particular uh, blockchain. Okay? Think about it this way. You don't want to say that you have a Python computer. You have a computer, and you can run programs in any programming languages. That's how we should think of the blockchains in the future. Um, and uh, our pi squared protocol promises precisely that, that once you have a formal semantics for a programming language, you can bring, you can do computational tasks in that language, provided that you have an implementation of the pi squared protocol on some destination chain or as a blockchain itself. So we need a destination chain to deploy pi squared. And we believe multiverse X is the best option because it is fast, it is cheap, that you already mentioned, and we are good friends with the team, with the multiverse X team. If we run into issues, we know where to ask, and we know that we'll get help right away. I think zero knowledge will make a huge difference in the next two, three years. Because once you have a powerful zero knowledge capability, you don't need optimistic roll-ups. You may not even need roll-ups, period, because you can build blockchains directly on these principles. How to, how to make it fast in hardware, that's something that I'm really, really interested in now. I think of optimistic roll-ups as a trade-off, as a compromise that we had to make in order to move on. But if we had a perfect ZK engine, as we hope Pi Square is going to be, then you wouldn't need to go that route. And in general, re-executing programs, there's a very basic principle in software engineering, that duplication is evil, duplication is bad. Students taking software engineering classes at our universities, at our university, University of Urbana-Champaign, they may fail classes if they just copy and paste code and change the name of the function and of the variable from T1 to T2. So you should avoid duplication of code, duplication of execution as well. So currently what happens in blockchain is pretty ridiculous if you step back and think about the big picture. We re-execute the same program many, many times over only to check whether the program or the proposal of the, of the, of the result was correct, only to validate. Why? If we have a formal semantics for programming language, and if we can generate a proof that the execution was done correctly with respect to that semantics, now we can only check the proof, which is much, much easier, much, much faster. So that's what I believe will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And many blockchains, I don't think they will disappear, I think they will migrate naturally into something else. We don't know yet what, but into something what blockchains were supposed to be, or they, what they promised to be from day one. The truth is, we're not all on the same playing field. Puedo mandarle dinero a mi familia, pero quién sabe cuánto llegará. Як ми відновимося? Як захистимо їхні майбутнє? Кулем дахарт ізда шоурі біадамі ламан. That's where builders can help. You understand that one unique problem. Let's bring balance to an imbalanced world. Stella, where blockchain meets the real world. So. I think the I think that the, the challenges um, will be more around uh, user adoption, uh, growing, um, and and making sure that you know everything is really robust and uh, and and well built, and um, uh, we still keep that great user experience. We we have a great performance for how the app works. Uh, I think we are there. Um, but as, as you've seen, we've launched a lot of products, a lot of new features. So what uh, a big challenge would be to actually make sure that everything works perfectly, uh, which it does, but you need to keep that on a very long-term time frame. So um, that's, that's one of the, the challenges, but now we're working on that as well. We're, we're growing the team. We're making things more structured. Things are going in, in a very, very good direction. Look, I think there's a war of protocols. You know, There's 100 protocols out there today. Um, they are in that top 10, if not top five. I think their ability to be able to specialize into certain niches and not necessarily have that kind of Swiss Army knife approach of we're doing everything and the likes, trying to specialize into being able to get key niches 
and to be able to really provide utility in certain industries and areas. And then after that, be able to grow out of those industries and diversify is going to allow them to succeed. And I think uh, we're going to see a lot of protocols fail. And I think uh, the ones that are able to be a bit more specific and specialized and focused are going to succeed. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to combat some of those challenges that they're going to face with the other protocols that are out there. Ethereum today is still the one in which most of the Web3 space is built on. So I think if they can be able to chip away at that dynamic a little bit and build from it and, and not get consumed by uh, some of the other protocols, I think that's really where some of the uh, intricacy is going to lie and where I, I, I wish them the best and I hope that we can support them and really identifying some of those niches and helping them grow within those areas to then be able to create further adoption. Currently, one challenge that the multiverse ecosystem has faced is interoperability. And uh, we're really happy that they are working with Accelerar now in order to have bridges and cross-chain um, interoperability that will help the ecosystem grow. Of course, every layer one chain needs builders and you know, the more cross-chain and interoperability are part of the protocol, the more builders you can attract, the more token holders you can attract, and the more that the user basis of projects that are already on Multiverse X can expand to other ecosystems. So that's the, the one thing that I think was a weakness till now and is going to be one thing that is an opportunity going forward and represents uh, you know, something that I'm personally you know, bullish on. They, they face the same challenges that all blockchains face, adoption and, and onboarding. How can we go to the next level when we have billions of users of the technology? How to make it really easy to use account abstraction, all this must work and be easy to use by everybody, not only our mothers or grandmothers. Everybody wants a better experience with the blockchain. And in terms of technology, I'm a bit biased now, but I think they need to bring all the programming languages on the blockchain. That's how you bring all the programmers on the blockchain. Programmers tend to have very strong opinions about languages, and you miss a lot of programmers uh, who might deploy on your blockchain if you have a hardware determined language or VM on your blockchain. I'm very optimistic, very optimistic. Optimistic about the future of crypto as the future of money, as the future of finances, freedom. I think freedom starts with financial freedom. If we don't have financial freedom, then we don't have freedom, period. We are permi permitted by our banks to buy food. We are permitted by our banks to pay our rent. We know all these incidents that happened lately when the governance was not happy with some groups of people and they simply froze their accounts simply for a different political opinion. That's unacceptable. We have to free ourselves of this. Ken. I think that they've done a really good job on like user interfaces. Uh, the When they showed me their wallet the first time, like 2020, I think it was like the best mobile one that I had ever seen at that point. And so I hope that they continue to like do that. I know they have like some payment stuff that they're working on. So uh, you know, I'm just excited to uh, see. And I, like I said, I don't like I don't like follow it on a day to day basis, but you know I, I just know the team is one of the fastest builders I've ever seen in the space, so I'm just uh, sure they're going to build some full stuff. Adoption has been one huge topic for for us for a long time. Right? How do we get more users? How do you how do you uh, make it easier for users to to, to join? Um, and that's that's where all these features, everything we launched comes together, right? We want users to not necessarily think about the technology that's in the background, but just use Exportal for their everyday life needs. Um, so whether it's crypto or fiat, because we also announced, you know, we're, we're going to launch a peer-to-peer -peer fiat payments. So making it easier for anyone to do anything they, they really want. So we believe that that's going to bring more and more users uh, because when you when you make it simpler for everybody, more users will, will come. And if, if it's one of the best user experiences out there, again, more and more users will use it. And that ties really well with, um, with Multiverse X as well. Uh, using a lot of the innovative, the innovative technologies and, and uh, products that we've built 
with uh, on on Multiverse X as well. Uh, so, for example, the on on chain two FA solution. Um, that's one of the one of the uh, most innovative features that we have, which sets us apart from from any other uh, wallet out there. So that's how that's how we uh, we look at uh, at the future and uh, user reaction. I've already mentioned that it is open source, decentralized, and the, the the kind of gold standard in terms of scalability. But we're now taking that even to a, a higher level. So a lot more improvements are coming with the next releases, um, aiming some super crazy numbers. Uh, we have several shards processing everything in parallelization. But then um, at this point, we're, we're processing something like 30,000 transactions per shard, and we're pushing to bring this to 100,000 per shard. Now, we can grow the number of shards to an arbitrarily large number already, but what I mean is even parallelization within the shard will just supercharge the um, uh, throughput and also the latency that um, the, the network will have. Then, of course, there are several other upgrades that have to do with staking phase four, other improvements within the um, tooling space, um, or other improvements even within the VM. The virtual machine gets an improvement with different standards um, and a, a very significant improvement for the framework that is being used to write smart contracts on Multiverse X. That's just one way of looking at it. But then at the same time, when you look at how this um, translates downstream to the startups, um, to the large companies with which we are interacting, and I was mentioning before, um, you start getting the bigger picture of how important these three days are for building the bridges. Take a look at what we're um, building, what we're sharing, and just um, notice how much of a next level this is compared to almost everything that's being built in the space and then to what this point because the it, it's very fascinating to look at the current coin but even more interesting to look at the trajectory um, and with multiverse x we've had um, extraordinary progress um, and with x day it's just this with very significant acceleration point that brings everything together